Oh boy, with the way episode 9 of Tokyo Revengers season 2 wraps up, our boy has a shot to make things right. Everything about the Christmas showdown went way better than I thought possible, and if he fumbles this, he doesn't get back together, doesn't explain the BS that he caused our girl Hina, I swear we're all gonna be jumping through our screens to strangle our boy. But all things considered, as much of an idiot as he can be, that hot-headedness and that, that refusal to back down is the entire reason Mikey and Draken got there and had time to clean up the mess, because... Holy, the past couple episodes here were really, really good with, in my opinion, episode 9 of season 2 being the best episode of the season in general. I mean, it was really, really fun. And the fact that just a few simple changes, delaying someone getting stabbed or warning someone or having the warning be there so that the stab wound isn't fatal, to then just these slight shifts throughout this scene that normally would have ended with death, which then would have propelled Black Dragon in a bad way, which then would have infected uh, Taman and Mikey would have turned evil. The fact that these little moments, that's all it takes, is these slight deviations, which can massively change for positive or negative reasons, but the fact that Mikey wasn't evil here, the fact that he came in, he was just literally riding his bike, remembering his brother, remembering the people that he lost, and the fact that this wasn't him psycho, it's him just protecting what he has, and the fact that he hasn't turned evil, the fact that he wasn't here to kill Taiju, wasn't here to be upset with his members, he was just here to remember and protect what he currently has. I love the fact that for the past couple episodes, right, it's been all beatdowns, and one kick Mikey comes in and cleans up everything like it was nothing, and it was fantastic. Now, I have a full live reaction to both episodes 8 and 9 available on my Patreon, so if you do want to see my full thoughts to either one of these episodes, head on over there and consider supporting as, seriously, I really had a good time with both of them. I think with episode 8, it was very fun, and there was some nice shocking twists. The fact that the sister was actually the one protecting this whole time was a nice curveball, but then really explains present day actions that we've seen of her and the brother, some off aura about the entire situation, so it helped explain it. And to see our boy, I mean, seriously, Takemichi, if he comes out of this without brain damage, I would be shocked, because the amount of punches he was dealing with, I mean, it was crazy. And to finally build up to our boy standing up to his brother for once, no longer feeling shackled down, the fact that as he starts getting beaten up, he realizes like, hey, if I haven't taken at least as much damage as Takemichi, I can't get knocked out. Yeah, I was like, well, that's absolutely facts. But the star of both of these is episode 9, hands down. So when initially our boy gets seemingly sucker punch and looks knocked out, I was like, there's no way Mikey, as short as he may be, and as much as people like to make fun of his physique, he's literally a one-man army, right? And here's the thing, if Mikey was built the same way Taiju was, that would be an apocalypse punch, because the boy is stronger than Taiju in his short form. Imagine if he had the Jojo physique of Taiju, it would be game over for the entire world if they decided to cross paths with Mikey. But I love the fact that it was enough of a sucker punch to maybe rattle his head for a minute, but he gets up with only just a little bit. And the fact that almost immediately Taiju's like, I actually gave my hardest punch today, so I guess it's going to take more than one. I love how initially they don't even show what he did, then they just show Taiju on the ground. And then we see it in slow-mo, the jump kick, and I'm like, that was absolutely beautiful. One thing that I was interested to see if they would explore this season or not, seemingly with the Black Dragon completely crumbling, it, it exactly happened, was we have the Snake Bastard who ended up selling out Taiju's location for money. And it, I was interested to see, I was like, okay, you know, we shouldn't really trust someone who's betraying their leader because they probably backstab us. But the fact that his true loyalty was never with him, but with the other person there, the dude who likes to wear high heels. I guess in Japan around like there was a moment where gangsters or like wannabe like gangsters like there was a fashion trend where some actually just wore high heels and I was a little confused at first because I was like if you're going to kick someone's ass why are you wearing heels like even if you like to rock them good for you but heels to fight but I guess that was just a fashion trend at some point like some gangs in Japan and I'm like all right I get I mean as much of a Jojo looking character as Taiju is throw him the Jojo fashion and we're right in business in my opinion but it explains a lot that pretty much immediately once he says no Snake Boy also says no and the fact that Draken took care of the entire army outside Mikey took care of him with a single kick the, it was perfect. The fact that it all gets summed down to as we prevented the initial death, so he didn't get a fatal wound, 
We stopped brother and sister from killing, and instead we were just fighting for our lives. Mikey eventually gets there, cleans up the streets here, and just all's well. And if we can resolve the Hina stuff, that would be the icing on the cake. Will he? It's Takimichi, who the hell knows, right? I mean, he had the easy possibility to explain why he was going about things, and he still went with the original plotline of I don't love you. So, you know, I, I'm not holding my breath, I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but it'd be hard to imagine he could make it worse than when he initially left her off, so I guess we'll see. Honestly, episode 9 probably had one of the best produced scenes, not to say like season 2 is like this magnum opus of anime production, but the flashback when we see of Taiju and they have that kind of like red filter, the kind of glowing filter, I really liked that scene, I thought it really popped off visually, and just everything about episode 9 to me was like a perfect Tokyo Revengers episode, with episode 8 being a nice setup and really helping to start break the shackles that are holding these this brother and sister down. So when they initially part at the end of the episode, you know, him saying, ever since mom died, you've kind of been a piece of trash, and like, if you beat us, don't think I'm not gonna hold back, and the fact that this whole family is just so complicated with the abuse, it was some really good stuff in my opinion. Like, I truly thought Mikey was evil at the start of episode 9, like, just the face, the look, everything about it, I was like, oh man, we're gonna have a lot more trouble on our hands than just having to deal with Taiji, but no, Turned out, the fact that like when he pulls out a memento that he wears around his neck and he's talking about the bike that his brother gave him, it just let a sigh of relief out. That being like, okay, you know, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, initially thinking nothing's changing from the breakup to even the initial trying to stab. But the fact that all these little moments built into this Christmas showdown, I mean... There's definitely some migraines, there's definitely some broken bones, but all things considered, no one died and Black Dragon seemingly dissolved. I mean, obviously things can come back and can come back strong. It's not the first time they got broken up. So who knows what's gonna happen next, but as it stands, we're actually making progress. As long as maybe he doesn't jump aboard and just, you know, immediately leave Otomichi in charge again, I think we should be okay. But honestly, knowing Takamichi's luck, he's gonna go back up into the future there and be in worse luck. So who the hell knows, right? But this was a really good one. The season's far from perfect, but it's an enjoyable season nonetheless. Now, I won't be doing a video, so what I've been doing is double reviews, so with a few episodes left to go, you would think I'm probably going to do a double review and then a final one. I think I'm just going to do one final video for the remaining episodes. I might do a short next week, depending on if it's a really good episode and I want to get my thoughts out on did they stay broken up or did they get back together. So there might be some form of Tokyo Revengers content on the channel next week, but there will be one final video just because not a lot of people are talking about the show, not a lot of people are watching the videos. I mean, as long as you keep smashing the like and stuff, it does help it do a little bit better, but all things considered, this really is a show more for me than anything, and it's why, unfortunately, I probably won't be able to do a season three on the channel, though I will probably do a season three on Patreon if it does get greenlit, but it is what it is. It's all business. As much as I enjoy some of these things, just not a lot of people talking about it. I think even the Reddit threads only get like a couple hundred, three hundred upvotes like a handful of comments it's just not popping off maybe it's a mixture of not being on a platform like Crunchyroll I don't know but it is what it is but I like it I like talking about it what did you think drop your feelings down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload on the channel and of course as I mentioned I do have a full live reaction to both of these episodes available on my Patreon so consider supporting so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one